Southern Cross is Tasmania's leading television station with a mix of the best local, national and international programs. We are unrivaled when it comes to providing news and entertainment for our viewers. The quality of our local programs is second to none, including the 6pm News Bulletin, Australia's favourite fishing gurus on hook, line and sinker, Discover Tasmania, 21 years of Target Tasmania's thrills and spills and many more. We have a proud history of supporting our community and last year our Give Me Five for Kids campaign raised in excess of $211,000 for children needing a helping hand. Along with 7-2 and 7-mate, Southern Cross has proven a formidable force with our station winning a record 13 years of ratings. Hello everyone, I'm Nick Digan and welcome to this special presentation. Southern Cross Television, or TNT9 as it was known for many years, is celebrating its 50th birthday. Join me over the next hour as we venture down memory lane looking back at some of the programs, the news and events and the people that have helped make Southern Cross part of Tasmanian viewers' lives. Our journey starts way back in 1959 when the Menzies government called for licence applications to transmit commercial television to the north and northwest of Tasmania. The licence duly granted to Northern Television Limited in 1960, part of the ENT consortium, which included a young Edmund Rouse. Perfectly obvious that uh, television was going to be a very major sector of the media business. and. Uh, as newspaper people, we obviously had a uh, substantial interest in that. Uh, there was also no doubt that television would affect the advertising revenues of the newspaper. And uh, so it was made logical sense to get a part of it. People were anxious for their own uh, commercial television station to operate. Up until then, you'd You'd have to watch television from Melbourne or from uh, Hobart with a very large antenna and watch a pretty snowy picture. So it was a big deal, a big event uh, when it occurred 50 years ago. Arthur Evans was appointed TNT9 Managing Director and set about the mammoth task of finding and establishing studio and transmitter facilities. One of the major things I remember is crawling around the top of Mount Barrow and uh, we were looking for sites. It's a very difficult place to find a site in northern Tasmania. A site in Watchorn Street eventually chosen and construction of the studio began. Another more significant challenge was finding staff to build the station's workforce. The ad came in on the paper. They said, join television. And so I, had, so I uh, went in for it. Of course, television was believed to be the up and coming thing. Work on building the station progressed steadily with a mandate to start broadcasting set down for May 1962. Tripping over carpenters and builders and uh, painters and I was given a pair of white overalls and underneath this building and the spot's probably still there. I used to lay the original cables. And camera test on 12. At the present moment, we're experimenting with this very highly expensive unit, which we hope is going to be satisfactory and which in time, of course, we'll be able to use to do sound on film interviews and things of that nature. Oh, we had a fairly good idea. We'd done a certain amount of homework. Uh, we knew it would work. We knew our transmission was OK. Uh, we had, of course, a period of test pattern time. And then following that, before the station went on here, we had a month of playing different features and odds and ends that we picked up, bits of film, uh, to just enable technicians to tune to the channel. And uh, that was an interesting time, to see the, the look on people's faces as they saw television for the first time. 
Television retail shops experiencing a record number of sales as supplies ran short in the lead up to opening night. The inevitable establishment of television saw a new breed of personalities arrive on the local scene with the advent of the on-air presenter. It was a young David McQuiston who decided to try his hand at the new industry. I was pretty nervous. I came up on a night to audition. I had an old jumper on and a pair of jeans and uh, I walked up a plank where the front steps now are to, to, to audition and got the surprise of my life to look into the uh, studio. You could look into the studio through a glass uh, door or a door with glass in it and there were people auditioning with uh, dinner suits on and uh, I went back out to my car and did my hair and took my sloppy jumper off and uh, found a sports coat and put on uh, and I got the surprise of my life when I got the job. McQuiston joined Bruce Farrer, Rod Thurley and Joy Swain as the original presenters. The ENT board's vision to build a television station in a paddock turned dream into reality when, on a cold autumn night at 6 o'clock, TNT9 officially commenced transmission. This is Northern Television, TNT Channel 9. Good evening, this is TNT9 where the viewing's fine, going to Northern Tasmania from St Helens on the east coast to as far west as Marilla. Now opening for our first day of transmission on this Saturday, May 26th, 1962. The station was officially opened by Lord Rowellan at 7pm, watched by the 2,900 licensed households in the transmission area. Television had arrived in northern Tasmania and the institution on the hill was born. Before Beckett... Hello, Rick. There was her. Welcome to the CIA. How many other women have you semi-stalked in the name of research? Is this a trick question? And when the plot thickens... We're spies. I'm like true loyalty will be tested. I am not going to be rescued by your girlfriend. Newcastle. After Bones. Tonight. Now is the time to lay new flooring in your rental property to get the most benefit come tax time. Call Modern Living Carpet Court now for delivery and installation by June 30. Modern Living Carpet Court, statewide. Balmoral on York in Launceston is central, really comfy, with great service and a wonderfully friendly atmosphere that makes it my home away from home. The Balmoral on York is where I like to stay when I'm in Launceston. Why stay anywhere else? At Elmic Electronics, we service and repair all major brands of electronic appliances, plasma and LCD televisions, DVD players, microwave ovens, stereo systems. In fact, if it's electronic, ask us if we can repair it. We are the authorised warranty agent for most major appliance manufacturers and we will even come right to your door. If this happens to you, then call us. Elmic Electronics, 445B, Main Road, Glenorchy. Fight electricity price rises with Tree Value Solar's best ever expandable package. Huge 5 kilowatt inverter, 8190 watt panels, plus home energy monitor for an unbeatable 2587. Strictly ends May 31st. Call 13 Solar today. Now is the time to lay new flooring in your rental property to get the most benefit come tax time. Call Modern Living Carpet Court now for delivery and installation by June 30. Modern Living Carpet Court, statewide. Tonight at 6. A man has died after being allegedly stabbed in the chest in suburban Kings Meadows overnight. A suspicious house fire in Ravenswood leaves a damage bill of $150,000 and grand celebrations the Country Club Casino marks its 30th birthday. Southern Cross News. Tonight at 6. The 60s were a pivotal time in the station's history. Television had arrived. It was new, it was exciting, it was glamorous. Suddenly, newspapers and radio had a powerful rival to contend with. Television quickly established a loyal following, but it came at a cost.
Our TV rates, of course, were about ten times more than radio. And I'd been used to selling radio advertising, and what we used to sell for $2.50 would sell for $250 on television. After initial reluctance from advertisers, it wasn't long before the revenue flowed as television was embraced. Hello there. Neil Pitts in Charles Street invites you to sit back and watch the amazing Whitmont Perma Press Trousers Test. All commercials were beamed live out of the TNT9 studio, but their transmission was governed strictly. We weren't allowed to play any more than three commercials in a break back in 1962. And if we did, we'd have to get on our hands and knees to the control board to say how sorry we were. The serious side of things was left to Bruce Farrer, who had the honour of reading the first news. There were no computers or auto cues, just a desk, microphone and ashtray. Farrer instantly becoming a household face with his distinctive voice and trademark pipe. It wasn't a conscious thing, Jim. It was just uh, part of me, and uh, I guess it became accepted as part of that. Much, I might add, to the delight of one guy in Brisbane, uh, sorry, in Launceston, who sold pipes. He bought two or three commercials a year, and he sold thousands of pipes, only because this idiot sitting up there you know, on the screen has uh, used one as an aid. Confused. You think you're getting double vision. Don't worry about that either. Lighting down here at the stadium, of course, from a television point of view, is not good. And consequently, the picture may not be quite as clear as what it should be. News was gathered in a very simplistic format in the early years. Interviews and footage shot on film, brought back to the station, developed, then spliced for that evening. Everything had to be shot uh, on film by 3.30 at the latest because you had to allow for processing time. The challenges of collecting news didn't hamper TNT9 from covering the breaking stories. This Fokker friendship in 1965 had problems and was forced to crash land at Launceston's Western Junction Airport. Channel 9 cameraman Max Lamb scored an exclusive news scoop. The explosion here in Charles Street early this evening took people by surprise. It's quite a devastating scene that we see here. A car, whether occupied or not, has been completely crushed. The fire has gone right through the old building, which Fitzgeralds have occupied for about eight years. A major logistical problem was receiving news from interstate. With no links to the mainland, viewers found themselves behind the times. We used to get the news flown over from, from Melbourne uh, the day after. And we used to pick out the, the main stories um, uh, for news that night, so we were actually 24 hours late. Even in those days, it was uh, pretty rich running uh, day-old news and trying to dress it up as having happened today. And it wasn't the only hurdle. TNT 9's first cameraman, Max Lamb, had the responsibility of filming local material for the news. The equipment also still in its developing stages. When you started, you had cameras without sound. That's it. Now the old bowl next here. Yeah. That was the only camera. David McQuesten, on a salary of four pounds ten shillings, would become the original face for television sporting coverage with the production of Sports Club, one of TNT 9's first live programs. At that stage, we didn't have specialist commentators. You were expected to be able to do everything from calling horse races to football to doing interviews. He's five feet eleven and a quarter inches. Very slippery conditions. He's up and he's over. Viewers also treated to special guest appearances from some of Australia's best-known sports people as the TNT9 studio was transformed into a mini sporting arena. Jeffries holds, holds the ball out. He can't get past him. Up and under, and this time Jeffries just patched him out of the way. How did you find it? It's the first time, first, first time in the studio. How did you find it? Not hard to play at all. <laughs> Having a television was a rare luxury. Households possessing one suddenly became refuges as people crammed in lounge rooms and around shop windows to watch. And what variety there was. That uh, we're going to enjoy presenting. I hope you're going to enjoy watching. Yes, sir, that's my face. The only car. Oh, you probably, probably thought you were the only one there. They're all there. <laughs> <laughs> These were untamed days for television, wild parties all the rage and thrown for any occasion. And there was no better cause than to celebrate one year of broadcasting in 1963. That's because this is quite a big undertaking. As we said, it's a party, so join us and see who takes the cake.
One of the first children's programs was Arabella's Attic. It enjoyed a loyal following that brought a child-friendly element to what was predominantly an adult environment. I think we had goodie bags, little gifts and things, and stories were read. So it was very simple, but it was a, a friendly sort of... I suppose because the set was cosy and it was intimate. We used to have a, um, a, a section in the kids' program where they'd come and ask you a riddle, and every now and again, um, some kid would be set up by an older brother to come and ask a really dirty joke and you'd have to sort of brush that over and just move on to the next child and give him a Freddo frog and just hope the little child went away for a while. Because TV was sort of new then and the local TV was important, people really connected to it. So coming up and being on Arabella's Attic was a big deal. Another program that would have a distinguished lifespan was QuizQuest. Conceiving the idea, shrewd businessmen Sir Raymond Ferrell and Gilbert McKinlay decided it was time to market the Launceston Bank for savings to a younger generation. We had to get the bank interested in children and children had to be interested in the bank. And how were we going to do it? Well, we worked out that the quiz show might be the answer. Still to come on our 50th birthday special, we reminisce about the decade of change, the 1970s. Love your Sunday night on Southern Cross. Australia, we get that you're all different. We get the cities, we get the suburbs, we get the towns, we get the country. We get how you use or don't use your car. We get where you live. We get you. Save on car and home insurance. Call Yui on 13 96 84. TLP, the Clarence Lifestyle Village. Welcome to your new way of living. Homeland Delights offers quality Dutch, German, English and South African groceries, cakes, marzipan and other European cuisine. Located next door to Choo Choo's Lolly Shop at the Margate Train. Homeland Delights, your fine food specialist, offering a taste of home. Radar Promotions Australia, the home of Tasmanian leisure and pleasure and commercial life. Standalone corporate television commercial production, promotion and events. Radar, it works. Applying wallpaper, not as easy as it looks. Bugger, should have gone to the paint shop. The right prep work and the right advice makes all the difference when applying wallpaper. It's where you buy paint. One, three, one. Dollar wait. To drive your advertising dollar further at minimal cost, call Radar Promotions Australia. At RACT Insurance, we understand that when you retire, you deserve a reward. Which is why we've developed Silver Savers, to acknowledge your more relaxed lifestyle. You'll receive amazing discounts on your car, contents and home insurance. And even more rewards if you combine your three policies into one. Insurance that rewards your retired Tasmanian lifestyle. Sold with RACT Insurance. Welcome back. The 1970s proved to be a defining decade for the station. There were new programs being produced. There was a new breed of presenter on our screen. It was a busy time for news too, both locally and nationally. But by far, the biggest change to television came in 1975, when TNT9 went colour. A viewing highlight was TNT9's annual Northern Lights appeal, which attracted celebrities from around Australia to raise money for local charities. Channel 9 for many years conducted, I suppose, the first telethon in uh, Tasmania, Festival of Northern Lights, an annual basis. It ran all day. It uh, raised funds, many hundreds of thousands of dollars, I guess, for charities such as, uh, as St Giles. Various artists um, out the front, there would be, uh, you know, you could buy hamburgers, sausages. It was a carnival atmosphere, if you like. It was a wonderful tradition for, for many years and, and did a lot for the community and, and I'm sure the uh, uh, the charities that benefited uh, were very grateful for the efforts of, uh, of Channel 9 and the Festival of Northern Lights. 
Taking the show to the people was just another way TNT9 entrenched itself into the community. Country music festivals were recorded at remote locations such as Savage River and Flinders Island. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Coastal Country. By 1972, David McQuiston's talents away from the camera were recognised, leaving his post as sports anchor. TNT9 recruiting Hobart's 7HO's Ray James to take over sports club. On the same day, at the other end of the building, radio station 7EX started the career of Paul Murphy. Hi, Paul Murphy reminding you that the 7EX man will be out tomorrow morning. The two would have a profound impact on television over the next three decades. With viewing audiences peaking, TNT9's advertising revenue hit the high ground through the 70s. Managing director Edmund Rouse swimming in a river of gold as the popularity of television soared and advertising revenues flowed. What quickly became your cash cow? Well, <laughs> well <laughs> for sure. Channel 9 did by accident. Uh... We're not in the newspaper business, the radio business, the television business. We're in the money business. And if, we, if it's legal and if we make money out of it, we're going to be in it. Television was a uh, licence to print money. This period was regarded by many as the golden years of the station. No program was too big or too small to produce as some of the biggest names in television were brought to Tasmania. Have you ever look back and think, what's happened? How did I become the Paul Hogan that's known nationally? Um, yeah, I often wake up and pinch myself, you know, but I don't knock it, you know. I met pretty much anyone that came to Tasmania. Um, we met them, worked with them and spent time with them. It was by the mid-70s when television moved out of the dark ages. On the 1st of March 1975 was the biggest thing to happen in television, regardless of going to stereo and then to, to digital that we are now. We are recording just for Posterity, a few scenes from the old control room before our new colour machine, which is supposed to arrive very soon. It was predicted to be the most expensive thing that ever happened to us. It never worked out to be so expensive, I don't think. I think the rates of uh, commercials went up uh, in the producing of it. Of course, the initial outlay of the, of the Everything had to be changed to colour, all on the one time. I really actually think the transition from black and white to March the 1st, 1975, going to colour was just a huge step. Um, and everybody was excited about it. As viewers adapted to colour, the vulnerability of camera equipment was still evident, as one iconic event nearly wasn't recorded. I was able to recall the 1977 Bernie Wheel Race, which was... Uh, I think it's been acknowledged as probably the greatest race that's been seen in, uh, in Tasmania when Danny Clark, when he, went, when he went from the almost impossible position. Can he make it? Yes! 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 Oh! A magnificent performance! <laughs> it was the last race of the day <laughs> and the battery, the, oh, the battery was running flat at the time. Oh, and, and of course in those days you couldn't, you couldn't bring it back and, put it, and call it back in the studio. It, it went to where <laughs> as is. The logistics of gathering news and producing shows became easier with the gradual progression away from film to tape and video recorders. Eventually news could be shot and edited up to the minute. Presenting TNT 9's 6.30 News. It was certainly busy news-wise in the 70s. Question. We have completed very carefully calculated cost-benefit analysis and feasibility study of a casino in Launceston. It's a very strong World Eleven. However, the West Indies have been setting the pace in the packet series so far. But it was a Sunday night in January 1975 that will never be forgotten as 12 people lost their lives and Hobart was split in two. People on the eastern shore could fully realise the plight of the drivers of the cars which came to rest on the western verge of the collapse. This evening, we look at National Park Conservation. TNT9's commitment to local television was evident by the extraordinary amount of programs that were produced. Almost live from the studios of Channel 9 in Northern Tasmania. There was one program that was entrenched as must-see TV, even winning a Logie. Have a go, have a go at that. <laughs> See? That's very good. So that teaches young children 
how to be mummies, and you can wipe a little body. <laughs> the Saturday night show was a massive undertaking by the station. I think the budget was something like three hundred dollars a week, and uh, from that. We built a program around the trots. We covered the trots every Saturday night and they wanted a live variety entertainment program to fill in the 40 minutes or so between each race. The theory was great. It was virtually impossible to do. It wouldn't have been if we hadn't wanted to cross live to the trots. <laughs> Probably the greatest achievement out of working at TNT9 was the Saturday night show because we took something from nothing and built up a show that went on to win a Logie and um, at the time gave work to a lot of people. A new station ambassador was also introduced to our screens. For songs and stories, things to do on Rupert's Roundabout. Oh, who's that behind us? That's Rupert. Well, that brings to an end another day's viewing here on Channel 9. We trust you've enjoyed the programs presented for you today and invite you to join us tomorrow morning for another day's viewing. As the decade closed, TNT 9, part of Edmund Rouse's ENT group, was at its height, but no one could predict what was ahead in a dramatic new decade. G'day. Can a close working relationship lead to the unthinkable? New Rafters, Tuesday. It's time to escape and get even more out of life with the symmetrical all-wheel drive Subaru Outback. And it's the perfect time to visit your Subaru retailer with real deals across the range, including a saving of over $3,000 on the adventurous Outback 2.5i. Now from just $37,990, drive away. Subaru, all for the driver. At Optus, we know how important it is for you to stay connected. That's why we've expanded our coverage in regional Australia. Now you can put the Optus network to the test with complete peace of mind with our 30-day coverage satisfaction guarantee. So you can try Optus for 30 days, and if you're not happy, you can simply cancel. No cancellation fees and no worries. To check Optus coverage in your area today, visit your local Optus retailer or optus.com.au slash local coverage. This winter's must-have essential short boots. Tough looks with studs and buckles, work looks with comfort, chic looks with low heels or high heels, or just some boring old basics. Rivers must-have short boots. $25, four days only. These heavy gauge jumpers aren't for wimps, they're for men, real men. Sherpa line, v-necks, crew necks, hoodies, zip throughs, pullovers. Keep the warm in and the cold out. Men's heavy gauge jumpers, 22 bucks. Visit Wishbone in South Hobart for inspiration to restyle your home. Exclusive stockist of the fabulous La Maison Furniture and Lighting Ranges. Be delighted by our selection of French inspired furniture and European linens. Wishbone, Davie Street, South Hobart. Steel prices are rising. Order now and beat the price rise on industrial sheds, on garages, on barns. Order now and beat the price rise on farm sheds. Call Fair Dinkum Sheds on 1800 10 11 12 and beat the price rise. Welcome back. The 1980s would prove to be the most turbulent era in TNT9's history. While ratings and revenues soared, there was much drama behind the camera. We were introduced to a new furry friend, we celebrated homegrown talent, we opened another casino, we even witnessed the outbreak of a media war between North and South. But by the end of the decade, it was a bribery scandal that would rock Tasmania. There was no man that polarised Tasmania more than ENT Managing Director Edmund Rouse. A shrewd and relentless force, Rouse learned his craft from his father-in-law, Sir Gordon Rolfe. We work on the very simple philosophy that a competitor's head is there to kick, not to pat. Edmund Rouse was a very interesting man to work for. Yes, he did intimidate people. Uh, he ruled with an iron fist. He could be quite a scary man, but he was also very generous. Um, he could be hard, but he could also be soft if he needed to be. The only thing I saw of Edmund was he brought me an all-day sucker every Christmas. <laughs> Personally. You've also got to be frank about it and say that he did a lot of good for, for Tasmania. David McQuestion used to call him the Rupert Murdoch of Tasmania. 
and it's probably pretty right. He owned newspapers, radio stations, hotels and television networks. It was Rouse's ruthless business mind and entrepreneurial flair that allowed him to build up a media dynasty, including television, radio and newspaper interests. But his finest moment came in 1982. Well, I'll tell you the greatest day of all. That was the day we knocked off TBT6. It was a very unpleasant and bitter fight, which made the victory all the sweeter. A string of managers were moulded out of Rouse's business style, including the loyal David McQuesten. Eventually, McQuesten took over the reins of ENT, but the two wouldn't stay out of the headlines in coming years. This is TNT Channel 9, serving the people of Northwest Tasmania in La Trobe, Devonport and Alveston. And that's certainly what viewers did. In 1982, the overall viewer audience of TNT 9 peaked to almost 84%. And the North West Coast was a very uh, big part of this station's audience and tremendously loyal to it. In fact, uh, I think in, uh, uh, back in those earlier days, uh, the North West Coast would have been our most loyal viewers. Luring viewers wasn't the only challenge faced by TNT9 on the North West. Transporting news stories back to Launceston became the stuff of legend. Cars used to be flagged down uh, on the Bass Highway uh, and uh, the cameraman and uh, sometimes the reporter would stand out on the side of the road and uh, with a, uh, uh, a couple of uh, tapes uh, wrapped up and uh, sort of uh, flag down motorists and say, uh, are you going to Launceston? Could you drop this tape off? And if you take it to the studio, there's $20 waiting for you there when you get there. And that was how we got it through. And we relied a lot on members of the public to take the film or, or, or the cassette through to Launceston in time to get it on air that night. In fact, it's quite often we've had people skidding to a stop and saying, it's all right, I know what to do, I've done it before. And you throw them the tape and away they go, like a man in a mission sort of thing, heading for Launceston. In all the years that that operated, uh, believe it or not, we only ever lost one tape. Incredible. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip made their way slowly up a walkway to the Albert Hall, making the customary stops on the way to chat to eager children. However, the excitement of a royal visit was short-lived. You know as well as I do, Robin, that in the Parliament... To do that, Robin. And you didn't do it. Tasmania was on the downward spiral, a division growing between forestry and the green movement. Business confidence was shattered while Tasmania's unemployment levels were rising as fast as interest rates. On a high from his brazen takeover of TVT6, it was Edmund Rouse who used his considerable media power to restore confidence and inspire a state. Roger made his famous mill, Claudio makes his wine with skill. We needed to do something to generate more optimism, more positive vibe within our state. Uh, it was in a bit of a lull at that time. You can make it in Tasmania. The state's brightest talent was on show with the help of the TNT9 show band as the popularity of Tasmanian new faces skyrocketed throughout the 80s. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, I've got written here, you dress nicely, colourful, that's beaut. Feelings, that's the name of the song. Where was it? You had no feelings. <laughs> Some of the acts were fantastic. It was, some were absolute shockers, um, but always entertaining. And it just rated a bit more and a bit more and it kept on going. Just one thing, and that is it's over with you. With the demise of the much-loved Rupert Rabbit, Howie the Yowie was born, filling our screens with the creation of the Saturday Fun Show, hosted by Doug Barker.
Another new face was that of 24-year-old Peter Murphy presenting his first weather on September 9th, 1984. The 80s also witnessed the creation of some classical Australian drama that captivated viewers. That the 80s in the media in Australia, it was, it was a, 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 you could write a cheque for any amount because it was just such a boom. Um, and so nothing stopped you doing anything within reason. If you needed to buy, spend a lot of money on a program, you got it. Because it was just, it was the boom years, golden years of television right around the country. TNT9 over the years became probably uh, one of the most prolific uh, producers of local programs of any regional television station in Australia. No project was too big for TNT9, whether it be a new cinema or a casino opening. Good evening and welcome to Channel 9's live statewide coverage of tonight, opening night. Well, hello again. I'm Judy Benson. Thanks for joining us. Another program that featured was Midweek, aimed at stay-at-home mums. It even drew the occasional international act. By the mid-80s, the Watch On Street studio was a hub of activity with television, radio and a film lab all operating. But by 1988, aggregation was looming and ENT parted ways with TNT9 after 26 years. Tricom has guaranteed the employment and conditions of all 100 staff and executives, at least until the full aggregation of television services in Tasmania. Tricom Broadcasting buying the station as a new star arrived in town. Tim Lester, Channel 9 News. The 80s were responsible for uncovering the talents of journalist Tim Lester. After a stint interstate, Lester returned to Southern Cross and to one of the biggest stories in Tasmania's history. Thank you, Mr. Ralph. When will you step down as chairman of ENT? Larger than life, very imposing, very intimidating, um, uh, very driven highly capable man who of course went on to have this uh, just spectacular, um, spectacular fall from grace which was, which really was just laced with tragedy. Alleging he unduly attempted to influence Labor MP James Glenister Cox. An out of control, arrogant situation. I think he had started to believe he could do anything and get away with it. Endeavouring to prevent Labor and the Greens forming a minority government, ENT Chairman Edmund Rouse attempted to bribe former television presenter turned Labor MP Jim Cox. And the 64-year-old former media proprietor was fined $4,000 and jailed for three years over the political bribery scandal. Shortly after, Jim Cox held a media conference. He spoke of the trauma and why he thought Edmund Rouse had offered him the bribe. In fact, I'm certain that he would be aware that uh, good old Australian terms, I was battling for a quid. Yeah, it wasn't good. You stand on the outside looking in and think, why am I getting blamed for something that I didn't know anything about? This afternoon, Rouse arrived at Risdon. Tonight, he begins his three-year sentence. The Royal Commissioner found that Mr McQuiston's involvement was not unlawful, but that he did have knowledge of the bribe attempt. Now, I don't wish to comment on that. I've said all along that I knew nothing about it uh, and uh, I stick to that point that I knew nothing that was going on. The 80s began and finished with a bang, but the changing face of regional television would take its toll in the 90s. Live, lightning can strike twice in the same place. Another cack stack. Do that again. Can you show us? <laughs> Will it be three strikes and she's out as Guy Sebastian sings live? Dancing with the Stars tonight. Hazel Brothers and the Heart Foundation presents the corporate and teams event for the 40th City to Casino Fun Run and Walk. Heart disease affects two out of three Australian families, and that's not good. The Heart Foundation needs your support by raising valuable funds. Enter now and do your fundraising online. 
The City Casino Fun Run and Walk is nearly here and it's not too late to enter. Remember, you don't have to win it, you don't even have to run it, you just have to finish it. Whether you're starting out in business or you're a seasoned manager, at the Australian Institute of Management, we know you're busy. That's why we've developed solutions to help you get on top of everything, from managing routine tasks and deadlines to the complexities of leading a team. We have a package to suit you. Plus, our courses, diplomas and qualifications run all year, so they're available when you are. Australian Institute of Management. For more info, visit aimtasmania.com.au. Well, honey, what do you reckon? It's nothing like a golf. Hands-free parking technology. Like a golf. A like turbocharged and direct injected. Oh, yeah, like a golf. But it handles like a golf. <laughs> if you listen carefully, it sounds just like a golf. The Golf, now from 21990 Drive Away, with free on-roads. Welcome back. The 90s proved to be a time of change as Southern Cross began statewide operations with the rollout of aggregation. For the first time in 32 years we switched on in the south, but with the changing face of regional TV some of our most enduring programs switched off. Sports Club's dominant reign came to an end with veteran host Ray James retiring in 1992 after 20 years at the helm of sport. And we're very, very pleased in Sports Club today to have at the sports microphone one of the touring members of the MCC team in the Lancashire captain and England opener, David Lloyd. David, a most sincere welcome to Tasmania. Thanks very much, Ray. Good to be here. He was passionate about it. He just believed, play it all. You know, if you, if you said to him, I don't care how what you run, you can play it all, he'd be happy, you know, just totally ecstatic. What a magnificent performance by Hartrell. Oh, he's soaring magnificently. And there it is, victory to Tasmania. Scott of Tasmania first. It was just so local. Um, and you had such a dedicated uh, person like Ray James, who uh, we used to joke would cover everything that moves. To Scarafiotti of South and the bigger girl, Scarafiotti of South, may have just won it. And Ray was famous for wearing his raincoat. He, uh, in fact, he had a bit of a nickname. I'm not sure if Ray's aware of this, but he was always called Raincoat Ray because you know, he always used to wear this plastic coat. Um, and, and indeed, he was he needed it a few times too, to be out in the in the rain. Would you put your hands together for the winners of the 1982 Channel 9 Winfield Six Day Bike Race? Tons of things on the Fun Show this week. Viewers were loving the mischief that was continuing on the Saturday morning Fun Show. Mike Lunn along with his loyal sidekick, Howie the Yowie, providing much entertainment to a legion of loyal children. Try it, Cobber! There we go, Purple. Hang on. Howie called him Wingnut on the birthday book. Oh, I did not! He was a bit put out, but he'll get over it. <laughs> oh, I know, was he the one with the big ears? Mike Lunn um, and Howie the Yowie often caused lots of trouble with viewers with some of their uh, remarks, but... Um, the kids seemed to go over the kids' head. It was the uh, adults that were watching it that were, were more upset. Oh, Dickie Tissue. Just a, a kind of a, a snapshot of, a, of an era, and it was. And ratings were terrific. Oh, right. Up and up and up and up, and up we went. Master Chef, a block, pfft. fun show. Right they up there. Nothing. Like nothing. Us. In fact, the, the ratings were so big back then, they didn't have enough numbers on the ratings sheet to actually. And the graph, they didn't have enough paper. It was so big. Exactly. Right. Was, I was agree. Huge. After several years of planning, aggregation finally occurred on April 30th, 1994, when Southern Cross became a truly statewide operation, switching on in the south of the state. And we're now about to transmit our program signal from Mount Wellington. We have a special guest to perform the duty, so let's now cross to Hobart as we welcome viewers statewide. 
What we're about to do now is replace the test pattern with an entirely new network, Southern Cross Television. Aggregation was a very difficult time. Um, it was a very, looking back, it was tremendously exciting uh, and probably the most exciting um, day in television. After the second departure of Tim Lester, Diane Massey became the station's first female weekday anchor and the Southern Cross News team was kept busy bringing viewers some of the biggest stories in the 90s. The wedding ceremony was over and photographs were being taken when shots rang out. The biggest headline occurred on a Sunday afternoon in 1996 when a state, a nation and the world's attention turned to Tasmania. On his way, murdering a young mother and then turned on the mother's three-year-old girl she carried in her arms. Final death toll 35 following the discovery of two more bodies from the remains of the holiday cottage destroyed by fire. Shock and disbelief slowly starting to give way to the grim reality of the tragedy. It was a story of not only national but international significance for all the wrong reasons. It was a day that we can remember as Tasmania probably losing its innocence. It was, it was just horrific. One year on, Tasmania has seen Martin Bryant's hearing and sentencing, sweeping changes to Tasmania's gun laws. Dear Nick and Howie, yep. you have been axed. By the mid-90s, aggregation had taken its toll on local programs. Favourites including The Fun Show and Sports Club were axed. No longer could regional television sustain the high costs associated with local productions. But that didn't stop the revival of special one-off programs. If I had a broken heart, I wouldn't have been able to move my arms. What about you? Did you ever have sex before a big test match? <laughs> You told me this afternoon you weren't going to ask that. Was the fight that everyone started saying, gee, Daniel Gill can fight? Yeah, it was, it was a bit, you know, it was a bit funny. And I looked around the world and thought, well, where can I go? And NASCAR was obviously, in my mind, the biggest challenge I could take on. And... Yay! After 32 years without being challenged, Southern Cross had a ratings battle on its hands. In a bid to up the ante, news anchor Kay Wilkinson was replaced by Steve Titmus in 1997. By 1998, the tide had turned and Southern Cross became Tasmania's most watched station, a position that it retains to this day. Got the pleasure to tell you you've won $70,000 in travel tats 35. How does that affect you? Beautiful. First prize. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> While there are people on this planet, there'll always be news, whether it's good or bad. 1998 was also significant with the retirement of news director Paul Murphy after a decorated career spanning 26 years. You always wanted to work hard for Paul Murphy and, you know, to this day, why does someone like that bring out the best in you? Well, I think because he, he led by example, he was here hours upon hours, days upon days. He trusted people to do their job, everyone was very loyal. You know, everyone would have given their right arm for the man. The last trip of the Tasman Limited, Paul Murphy reporting for Channel 9 News. There were plenty more changes ahead in the new millennium. G'day everyone and welcome to Hook, Line and Sinker, Tasmania's own fishing show. A fishing show, digital television, a new logo and a new on-air chemistry evolved. Chemistry? What chemistry? Joe doesn't like Fezzy, Fezzy doesn't like me, I don't like Joe. <laughs> Joe's always had a crush on me, as you know. Oh, yes. The secret's out. I've always had a crush on you. But it has been fun. Joe's only human. I mean, who <laughs> hasn't got a crush on you? But it is television's power to wield images of tragedy and triumph that have been evident since its inception. The following year, the world's attention turned to a little-known country town in Tasmania. There's relief in Australia as two miners are found alive after being trapped underground. It is the Great Escape. <laughs> just as they had promised, Todd Russell and Brant Webb walked out of the Beaconsfield gold mine just before six this morning. So there you have it, a look back at our last 50 years. What the next 50 holds in store is anyone's guess. We're very proud to have been a major part of Tasmania's television entertainment since 1962 and take this opportunity to thank you, our loyal viewers. We will leave you with some of the lighter moments captured over the years. And as ever, thanks for watching.
Uh, he, I think he put on a real good show. Real people are watching you that way. <laughs> real good show. Yeah, yeah. congratulations. Petition finishes on Saturday. Matthew Sullivan, Southern Cross News. And Steve, I would have loved to have seen him do the harker. <laughs> and in sport, England in a strong position after day three of or day one of the third cricket test. Thank you very much, uh, Ray. Um, thank you for that. John, yeah. <laughs> What else can I say? How long gonna be bitten by a Raymond Fun Show doc? <laughs> <laughs> Smith interrupted. Can I just pull your microphone out? Yes. These are terrible, these problems that we have with live television. <laughs> Monica Celeste has returned to public tennis with a victory over, uh, sorry, victory with a victory 27 months after being stabbed by a spectator in Germany. The fire is raging out of control. It's heading towards the town. We're only one kilometre away from St Mary's. And Mr Ken Briggs has purchased a translator and put it right next to the ABCs up in Juliana Street. Now, isn't that good? New Zealand police investigating the sinking of the Greenpeace Surrey. Ah, nothing out. Have a look at uh, trotting at uh, racing this week. <laughs> It's a fast rate, actually. Well, you would agree about Douglas. He's a weak kneed lily livered, jelly bellied, limp wristed wimp, and he barracks for Hawthorne. So let's have a look at some AFL action. Wow, what a sensational story. It's a beautiful story. Thanks so much for that, Lenny. Major physical energy. Oh. But, Paul, I still think it pays to be a lover and not a fighter. That's sport. I think they're very wise words. Thanks for that, Sean. Mr. Scott, how long have you been judging at dog shows? 52 years. Uh, you've been tied up with dogs 52 years? Yes. 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 Right, judge's comment, firstly to Peter Kaye. Yes, thank you, Jim. Well, for an ageing transvestite and part-time homosexual, I'm sure that you fully appreciate the quality of tonight's acts, and I know that next Saturday you'll be teaming up with... <laughs> going, pousy wowsy pousy. No, <laughs> I thought you were going to go to Burns again. Have a look at that. No, no. So have a look at the animal shelter wrist. Re Break. This is a chance, winner was number one, Young West. Oh. The winner was number one, Young West. That's at Helen's, Flinders Island, and also Marawa. The overnight low was minus two. Loosen up. Apple Maid is a freshly clutched bin. <coughs> no, I'm getting worse. Is she having a laugh or what? To the quiz quay. <laughs> Hey, you can't do that, you prick! Chance to win! Ow! Ow! And the uh, judges' official margins were a short half head by a short half head by a short half head by a short half head. So it was a great finish in the final event. What keeps coming you back and makes you keep coming? Coming you back. <laughs> <laughs> My first opportunity to congratulate you on your engagement to Andrew. Just fantastic. And I didn't think classified advertisements worked. Good night, good evening. And the fella's biggest worry is the cold. But today, it's really, really quite hot. Hang on. And also, members of the of the b -b 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 bugger. <laughs> Why were you taping that? Yes. Oh, don't be a bastard. Guys, <laughs> this is a confident of seeing 55,000 people walk through the turnstiles, which would be a bloody exciting thing to do, wouldn't it? I wonder if they go all at once. We're now joined by Nathan Tempetal, Tempet, Templeton, what's your name, Nathan? Templeton. With Saturday Sport. <laughs> Site of Tasmania's most famous. Port Arthur. Yes, Stephen, must wait until I give your name. Sorry about that. Star Philly Jennifer has taken out the tab. In Big Brother Kim, I think, uh, Kim, I'll tell you that it will be Marty to, to win the lot. There you go. Thanks, Ken. Tasmania home for the next 80 years. Oh, crikey! Tim Francis, Southern Cross News. For those who think there's no place for women in boxing, this may just strengthen their case. Dual Olympic discus thrower turned boxer Lisa Marie Visignari took on Lisa Hins at the Golden Gate Hotel. <laughs> Excuse me. It's <laughs> my
Excuse me, oh, Steve. Oh, yourself. it's a wonderful spectacle. And Joe, good luck in the Bernie 10. <laughs>